the brain stuff is so fascinating. There's a lot of really, really interesting emerging research on it. And part of it is, it's kind of two parts, right? Part of it is, yes, neuroscience, right? Which is mostly hormonally driven. And the other piece of it is just like, simply our brains are overloaded, right? Mm. People people use the term like mom brain to be kind of like pejorative, right? Almost to like discredit women for our brains not working properly when we, you know, have babies. But really it's just like women are so overloaded. Moms in particular are so overloaded with way too much stuff on our brains and our brains just aren't designed to carry the mental load that we're carrying, right? Like the expectations are just too high and like the sleep and the nutrition are not high enough to keep up, mm-hmm. right? So part, yeah, part of that is just like, there's not enough capacity to do what we're asking our brains to do. But the other piece is, yes, when you become a parent and uh, brain chemistry changes for all caregivers. So there are like certain hormonal drivers that hit harder when you've given birth, right? Because when you're pregnant, your estrogen and progesterone are just like skyrocketing. And then right after you give birth, they just absolutely dive like mm. off the cliff. And that makes then that then signals other hormones to to rise up. So you have like oxytocin and prolactin rising, you know, right after childbirth when you lose all of that estrogen and progesterone. But when you lose all of that estrogen and progesterone, those hormones are also tied to feel good neurotransmitters. So think about like serotonin and dopamine. And so when all of when the estrogen and progesterone drop, the serotonin and the dopamine also drop. And that's why you get those effects like the baby blues, right? So those first two Mm. weeks after having a baby when you just kind of are like sad, moody, weepy, things like that because your body is adjusting to losing all of those, all that feel good, you know, being pumped full of all that feel good stuff. But the oxytocin does something really interesting. It actually drives you to learn how to take care of your baby. Hmm. So this whole idea that like, you become a mom and you just magically have these instincts, that's a a myth, right? There's no such thing as mothering instincts. The truth is that mothering is a learned skill. And so oxytocin gives you, oxytocin is like the, the chemical, like the bonding chemical, right? The like cuddly, emotional bonding chemical. And so you can think of it like, I'll use myself as an example. My daughter, when she was born, had terrible colic. If anybody who has experienced colic, my condolences, it is a nightmare. Hmm. And so I was trying everything that I could to fix it, right? To find a solution for colic. I had never experienced colic before. I had never been a parent before. So I had no idea what I was doing. But I stumbled upon this ebook about how to fix colic, basically. And it was like offering different burping techniques. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. So I like watched for you know, the cue that she was supposed to give that said she needed to burp. And then I'd like put her into the burping position and it would work, right? She Hmm. would burp and she would be kind of like relieved of colic for a little bit. And so that is a situation where it like gave me a spike of oxytocin. I tried something, it worked. I took, you know, I I took care of my baby. And Mm -hmm. so it it wired my brain to be like, great job. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You did Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. And so it, it, you know, it gave my brain the reward of oxytocin. And so I, you know, it's like trial and error, trial and reward. And so you're getting these boosts of oxytocin every time you're taking care of your baby, because when you're taking care of a child, you're learning, right? You're learning who that child is. You're learning what works for them. You're learning just like mechanically how to do something that you've never done before. And this happens for everybody. This happens for fathers. This happens for nannies this happens for grandparents whoever's taking care of a child is getting these hits of oxytocin in their brain which is basically just encouraging learning because that's Hmm. what parenting is yes you're like calling it a head start is exactly right right we do have this like massive hormonal cascade head start but in the end it is just a learning process and learning takes effort and learning takes time and learning takes failing Right. Like mm. as a mom, how many times do you just flat out fail at something? <laughs> and and that's a learning moment. Right. But the tolerance for that in other caregivers can be a little bit lower. Right. Because the expectations on them tend socially. Right. Tend to be a little bit lower, a little bit lower. 
um, sometimes a lot of bit lower, <laughs> but yes, that's the, and so then it, it just kind of becomes a cycle, right? Where it's like, you've tried the zillion things. So you, you have a, a higher capacity, right? A higher like frustration tolerance basically for managing when it doesn't go well and like just kind of getting back in there and trying something different. And you have all of this already learned knowledge. Whereas, you know, a dad might get more easily frustrated because they haven't had all of that exposure to failure and they haven't had as many hits of oxytocin. Oh, I mean, in the U.S., we're lacking almost everything to support <laughs> women and mothers. <laughs> That's like, um, right, like from a society level, overarching federal le- poli- like policies, first of all, we need paid leave, right? On average, most women go back to work two weeks after giving birth, which is a, just an absolute abomination, right? So paid leave, right? We can look to many other countries who are doing that very well. Sweden gives 480 days of paid leave to, I believe, each parent for each child. So that's like more than a year. And I think they can take it within like the first five years, however they want to split it up. And so there are plenty, you know, the U.S. is the only industrialized country that doesn't offer paid leave as a federal policy. I think only 13 states in the U.S. right now have paid leave policies. So that would be a big help, right? Letting parents Mm -hmm. actually stay home and recover and adjust to becoming parents. And even things like in, in France, like pelvic floor physical therapy is part of just routine postpartum care. Whereas here, most of the time you have to pay out of pocket for it and it's hundreds of dollars per appointment. But if you think about what happens to your body, like it makes sense that you would need some expert help and support and coaching and exercises to help it sort of go back into place, right? All of your organs Mm -hmm. literally rearranged. So like some of your muscles tore apart, your ligaments stretched. It takes time and, and help putting your body back together. But even on an individual level, you can do things to sort of try to, you know, try to build your own village, right? Like that's one more task on your plate, right? Mm-hmm. Which is unfair, but using whatever resources you have to make sure that you have the support that you need. I'm a, I'm a big fan of postpartum doulas. Like if you're pregnant right now and you at all have the resources, a postpartum doula is so helpful because they're a person that's going to actually help you get food and sleep on top of sort of True. like coaching you through what's actually happening in this transition to motherhood. Even things like using Meal Train, which is just a free website where you can have people sign up to drop off meals for you postpartum so that you are eating and you don't have to think about like cooking and cleaning and things like that. So yeah, just really trying to build your your own personal village to give you this the, the, as much support as you possibly can. And then, yeah, there are so many wonderful advocacy groups um, like Chamber of Mothers and Moms First who are working for federal paid leave policies, affordable child care all of those things that moms are basically just kind of like left out on their own to figure out we can, we need to start like recreating that village. Cause that's how we evolved, right? We evolved parenting collectively and in communities and learning from other mothers who were more experienced than us, having someone who could take the baby and take care of them so that we could rest and recover. All of that used to be built in and, and it's not anymore. We're just basically isolated and trying to figure it out ourselves. And it's the opposite of how we evolved. <laughs> 